Hello and welcome to Secure Ninja TV. I'm Alicia Webb. No, I'm Alicia Webb. No, I'm Alicia Webb. And today we're at Hack Five. Secure Ninja. here with Secure Ninja TV and we are bringing you a different sort of a video. It's behind the scenes because we're doing something awesome today. We're at RSA Security Conference in San Francisco and we're taking the day to drive across the bay to go over to Point, Point Richmond. It's our team be on the line toward Point Richmond and San Rafael. Point Richmond. Point Richmond. <laughs> Confirmed. To do a little YouTuber collaboration with another very important hacker YouTube channel called Hack5. If you haven't heard of them, check them out. Subscribe to them. They're amazing. They cover all kinds of products and just techniques in the hacker space and they really show you how to do some cool stuff. So we're going to go to their studio. I think we're going to be on their show. So it's going to be a fun day. Stay tuned. Okay, we're approaching the Hack5 studio. Alright. Hey, Dan. Oh, I'm so good. Yay. Oh, we are. Hey. We are. Doing a behind the scenes. TV, visiting Hack 5. Welcome. Thank you. Let's do it. All right, come on, check it out. I can't wait. The Hack 5 Hackerspace Studio Warehouse. Welcome to the Hack 5 Warehouse. It's, it's a lot bigger five. than our old studio. Yeah. Started in a living room, then a garage, then bought a house, then back in a garage in an ancient firehouse, and now here. Yes, we guys keep growing. That's the it's wow. because of them. You let us. Is it this the viewers? Yeah. Yes. They're making us do it. More hacks. Should we give her a tour? Sure. Uh, there's the podcasts, which include Hack 5, Hack Tip, Metasploit, Minute, Threatwire, Tech Thing, and probably some more that I'm forgetting. And in addition to the shows, we fund it all through the custom hardware that we build. Things like the Wi-Fi Pineapple, Land Turtle, USB Rubber Ducky. We also do stuff with Mike Osman with his great Sky Gadget stuff. And all that gets fulfilled here. So most of the space that you just walk through and then back here is the hack shop. So this is where we store and inventory everything that we sell for our online store, hakshop.com. Then we have a few vignettes back here. Yeah. Uh, so, just wrapped up earlier is a home audio and video podcast where Patrick Norton and Robert Heron put on just here, so that explains the stereo gear. My very, very messy drone collection area where I build drones. Right. I also have MySpace! And then Shannon's cool. epic spot. This is one of my favorite new hacks. I connected this little guy to an Arduino, but I hooked it up to a bunch of little photo resistors. And as somebody walked past him in the front, <laughs> their shadow would pass over the photo resistors and make a head turn to wherever they were standing. Oh, neat. So it would look like it was following them on the motor. <laughs> yeah, it was so much fun to build this thing. Okay. That's another really fun one of Shannon's. Oh, cute. This was a design for the show. Uh -huh. And so in this shadow box, we have a 12 volt battery. And a neon yeah, hat. Kind of uh -huh. now, but... There we go. Yeah. And now we get rainbows coming out of the Pop Tart Cat's I butt. I love it. I love it. <laughs> She's pooping rainbows. She's pooping rainbows. So, do you want to see the studio? Yes. Right, let's just Absolutely. through this door here. Oh my gosh. Okay, this thing so... is smart. You have to see this. Really? It's really easy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Are you kidding? <laughs> it's like a 64 character pack. There you go. I love it. And, and that's that Kirby. Is our password. <laughs> now we're in. So this is Kirby. She is the, she doesn't like to be held. She's the Hack 5 mascot. She's been with uh, Darren for about 15 years. So she's a little old lady. We're married in Oregon. Aww. They're married in Oregon, apparently. She's like, who's this? Who's this? I want to go back to where the food is. <laughs> there you go. So this is actually three studios in one. And we have the main, which is convertible either a tech thing or we can flip these panels around we can change the displays and change the uh, colors on the LED wall and make it become hack 5 similarly we also have another set over here that we'll sometimes use if we have like a Skype interview or things of that nature and then we have the really colorful set right over here which is currently where our fake Tom Merritt friend is that we focus <laughs> on nice. uh, but this is where we do threat wire and then in addition to threat wire, and I love this system, we can just go ahead and pull that guy up. Oh, that's good. And do a green screen and all of that stuff. And all of this is being captured live to tape over a gigabit connection, believe it or not, to a NAS, where it gets edited 
like immediately after we live take it onto these machines here, uh, which run Premiere and our little touchscreen guy here for Wirecast. Uh, we awesome. use Premiere Pro for all of our editing and we do everything right here in the studio. So it's really easy for whoever's editing, uh, if we do have somebody sitting back here, to see exactly what's happening on set right. um, while this is going on at the same time. Awesome. And lastly, yes, the ATEM software control. All right. So this Darren is... knows about that one. So we have this big mixing console, which is really nice because you can get like fine-tuned details and you get your like fader. Hey, look at that, it's John. John, you're on camera. <laughs> <laughs> and so that's really fun, but we want to be able to actually switch the show live while we're actually doing the show. And so uh -huh. we played around with a few different concepts. We did some foot pedals. We actually have some arcade buttons that are sunk into our set table. And then in addition to that, we have the best, the uh, uh -huh. Super Nintendo controller. And so this is just Bluetooth over to the computer here. And what will okay. happen is when I press the buttons, I can actually switch which camera we're feeding from just like that, and then start and select will actually open up Premiere and start recording and stop recording That's for us. amazing. So you're essentially hosting the show, live switching the show and editing the show as you host the show, and it all happens in one hot Hack 5 moment. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> well, we, we try to make it look like that. There's like hours of research <laughs> and writing that goes into it beforehand. Right. But right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think it's all about refining the process and automating as much as possible. And that's kind of the hacker way is you see something and if there's something you're constantly doing over and over again, right. well then that's just prime for a bash script or some way of like automating that process so you don't have to do it. I think laziness, in fact, is yeah. kind of one <laughs> of the pillars of hacking. And that's yeah. so true. Should we show them the, uh, the little controllers, the arcade buttons? Yeah, go for it. Okay. On this table here, we've <laughs> modded it so that we have arcade buttons that are built in. And as we hit these, they also change the cameras. So over on my side, I have controls for my own cameras. <laughs> and then on Darren's my side, side oh, uh, yeah, on Alicia's Darren's side, side. <laughs> she has the white camera, Darren's mine, and then we have Darren's computer and Shannon's computer. So we can also have an HDMI input for each of our computers and show websites and things like that. Well, hi. <laughs> there you go. I'm switching it. Yeah. So we do that while we're recording the show. And then we also have our prompter set up for all of our bullet points and things like that so we don't go off topic. Uh -huh, and uh -huh. we run all of that straight from this little guy, which is a keyboard. It's a Logitech Bluetooth keyboard or a proprietary Logitech keyboard. Right. And we simply plug this into the computer that is running the prompter software, which is just a Windows computer, I believe. Right. Pull up a text file and then... There you go. We hit the space bar and it starts pulling it up. Oh my gosh, this is amazing. It's like when hackers meet video production, yeah. things just get better it and is. more That's efficient exactly and, and more interesting. <laughs> I love it. There you go. Very cool. We're in the Hack 5 studio. Yay! <laughs> I like your sticker wall. You've got I some love cool the sticker stickers. Yes. You've got a secret, secret ninja sticker. Ninja. Right I there. love that. What are some of the other highlights? Bounce. Uh, let's see. Um, this one says, do not poop here. Oh, okay. In Dutch, That's good. Of course. <laughs> yeah, right? of course. Don't Which poop here. Cool. Uh, let's see. This one's cool. It's our USB rubber ducky logo. Uh -huh. We have B-Sides Las Vegas over here, of course. Excellent. And then we have a bunch of other fun ones. Here's iHack Charities. A few different ones on here from Armitage, of course. Mm -hmm. You got Demon Saw. I like yeah, that Yeah, we have Demon Saw. So plenty. Like all of our friends have kind of sent us their stickers yeah. in one way or another. Yeah. Speaking of which. And now, Yay! Uh, an AMA TV. I love it. If you can get it on there, there right? we go. <laughs> there you go. That fits in well. Beautiful. I think so. All right. Well, this is amazing to see. Thank you so much for showing us the actual Hack Five Studio, and I'm super excited because you're actually gonna have me sit in on an actual Hack Five production. Oh, oh, oh. oh not you're just gonna that. You're gonna have it on. Show We're gonna me have some? you hacking my phone. <laughs> what? Seriously. How do you know I haven't already hacked your phone? Uh -oh. oh! Boom! See the ninja? Yes. <laughs> okay, I haven't already That's hacked good. your phone, but you're gonna show me how. Yes. Okay, I'm excited. Super simple. All right, let's do it. Hello, welcome to Hack Five. My name is Darren Kitchen. And I'm Shannon Morse. No, no, we talked about this. You're Alicia okay. Webb. Oh, I'm Alicia Webb. Yes. It's, it's very unfortunate what happened with Evil Server and Shannon, but I assure you the show will continue on, and uh, it's good to have you in the studio. Thank you. From Secure Ninja. Thank you for having me, Secure Ninja and, and myself. We are happy to be here. Absolutely. This is awesome. We're on Act 5. Yeah, it's really fun to run into other security podcasters, especially during RSA, and 
I, you know what? It's really fun timing too, mm -hmm. because there's, during RSA, I, I know that the, the FBI director just did like a keynote there or one of the talks and there was like a lot in the media right now about these guys. Yep, that guy right there. Yep. It's the iPhone. Mm-hmm. You guys know what we're talking about. Apple versus the FBI. That's right. This is a sticky one. Um, and you know, we're gonna try not to get too political in here, but just to sum you up, in case you've been living under the rock, basically the FBI wants Apple to write a custom backdoor for them. In so many words, it's a custom version of iOS that allowed them to try the, uh, to brute force the pin code on a phone without it having it wipe the data after 10 tries. And Apple's been refusing on the grounds of security and privacy. It's gone all the way to the House Judiciary Committee where the Congress has emphasized that if Apple and the FBI don't work this out, there might be some consequences that we may all not like, and that is scary. It's a mess. It kind of is. You know what's really weird, too? Here I am running Android, uh -huh. right? And I have the open source build of, uh, it's not AOSP, but it's the CyanogenMod mod on here. And you would think in this case, here you are with you know, the Apple proprietary phone, you, you would think that open source usually wins when it comes to security. I actually think that Apple wins for everything. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you know, you've been waiting 10 years on Hack 5. We've got our first. Our Apple <laughs> fangirl. There you go. <laughs> it's happened. <laughs> um, I'm here. Yeah. So I figured th this would actually be a perfect time to demo something that we actually demoed four years ago and is very applic uh, applicable here. Mm -hmm. But before we get into that, I know that this has been a very emotionally charged discussion for a lot of people. It has. And I wanna bestow upon you some of my advice when it comes to these sorts of things. And that is to completely abstract this concept, this very important pivotal concept that may set precedent for the rest of the world. And I'm not telling you to believe in my opinion, and I'm not telling you to think that one way or another, but I'm just saying this practice has really helped me with a lot of walks in life. Mm -hmm. And that is not to look at it through the eyes of grief. Uh, and I've been lucky enough to protect myself from that. Uh, and I've been able to abstract this to not looking at this as like the terrorists and the freedom and really just look at it as the technology. Because right. when you take everything else away, what you're left with is something really simple. It's, it's not about terrorists, it could be anyone. It's not about emotions and grief and the freedom. Um, and forget about Apple too. Mm -hmm. You know, like here you are as like yeah. Apple fangirl, right? And here I am like, you know, open source fanboy. And yet it could be either of those in this case. Because I know that Apple is like one of those brands, right? It's like you right. love it or you hate it, right? Just, yeah, you just get behind it or you question it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's, it is a proprietary tech company that's standing up in this sense, but it would be the same thing if it were Linux, right? And actually for all of our viewers outside the US, this could be just imagine it's anywhere in the world, not just the backwards US. Uh, so I find that in my personal opinion, the question really comes down to, does a government of the world have the right to compel an entity, be it a citizen working on an open source project or a big multinational company like Apple, do they have that permission to instruct an entity to write for them custom software for the purpose of bypassing security? Yeah. 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 Wonder I how you guys. That. Yeah, so let us know in the comments how you guys think about that. But with that setup, what I want to do is actually show you a demo on how we can now break into this phone, which has a lock screen, right? very much like any other phone might, but it's right. running Android, and how this, if this situation were to have played out different, and if it wasn't an Apple proprietary device, but rather an Android device, we might not be having this discussion. It's a good discussion to have regardless. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we've got this Android phone. Uh, we're gonna turn it on. It's, it's locked, oh my gosh, four digit pin. Darren, do your thing. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna sit here and we're gonna press zero, 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 and hit enter. Okay, that was the wrong pin. Now we're gonna type zero, 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 one, and hit enter. Um, actually, you know what, why don't you take care of the rest? You kind of well, see where this is going. Well, I kind of have places to go after this and this is gonna take forever. And the situation with the Apple phone is that there are only so many attempts that you can employ on the phone before it completely won't let you do anymore, so. You're not suggesting we just go through every combination, are you? Actually, I kind of am. Really? Like, no joke, on Android, it doesn't ever stop. Really? I, I have a screenshot of, you have tried 9,000 attempts. Oh my gosh. Wait 30 seconds. Well, that's brute force at that point then. Right, but the beautiful thing is, or be beautiful or scary depending on the way you look at it, is an attacker could now get into this in approximately 16 and a half hours, even with the 30 <laughs> second wait time in between each five tries. You've calculated. 
Uh, yeah, so I actually did this in 2012. I've got this forum post here where I say something to the, to the effect of uh, basically uh, it comes out to 16 and a half hours, which isn't bad if you're the NSA or the mafia. This is also in a pre Snowden world. But what I want to demo is this awesome bash script that makes this possible with the USB rubber ducky. And how long does that take? Uh, actually, the bash script it takes a lot uh, less time to write than the payload that it generates. Okay. So what we need to do is generate a USB rubber ducky payload. And what that is, is basically like it's a keyboard macro device. Mm -hmm. So you instruct it to type 0001, 0002, 0003, mm -hmm. and it'll do all of that for you uh, so that you can just then plug it into the phone and have it do the brute force for you. Right. But the ducky script to do that is like 65,000 lines long. Okay. So we can do it in one line of bash. Really? Yeah. You can do this. Check it out. I so. Can see it. Uh, this is the giant line of bash here, and what it's doing is it's writing to this file here called androidbruteforce.txt. I'm going to take all of this away and start from the very beginning and start building it up. So let's actually just look at the very first command before we start tacking on all of this crap. <laughs> and the first thing you'll notice is we're doing an echo between 0000 and 9999. And it's using this thing called brace expansion, where we put it inside of squiggly brackets. I'll give you an example. If we just do 11 and 00, zero what we're going to do is we're going to get 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Mm -hmm. If we tack onto that with a pipe, an xarg statement right here, That's now going to write string in front of all of those. So what this command does is it keeps building upon itself with these different pipes. So it's taking that, and we've echoed this out with this brace expansion. We've used XARG to put string in front of everything. We're now using sed, which will, every f after every five attempts, put the word wait. And then ah. we keep adding on and adding on. And what's crazy is, what this will end up doing is creating, with one liner of, of bash, it will create for us a ducky script. Now we're, we're adding these delays, you know, because uh -huh. we, we have to, to wait a moment before we type the next thing. And ultimately, when we've strung this all together, what we end up with is a ducky script, where if I now make this 0000, zero, zero, zero Oh, I've hit numlock, that's why. Through 9999, it creates this just massive script, mm -hmm. which is so much faster than us writing it out by hand. Right. In fact, if I now pipe that to word count and list, whoops, caps lock's on. This is a 62,000 line long text file. Wow. And so what this comes down to is when we encode that text file for the USB rubber ducky, and we use something like an OTG adapter for, well, this phone is micro USB, mm -hmm. we can now take this and plug it into the phone, and it's going to do all of those attempts for us. Every single four digit combination. Yes. Excellent. And unlike a human, it's not going to forget. It's never going to have to take a bathroom break or anything. Right, right. OK, and it's going to wait 30 seconds in between each attempt? Yeah, actually, here, let's go ahead and plug it in and see. All right. So you just turn it on, and we just plug, oops, plug that in. There you go. OK. Just hold it. Look, it's being hacked as I hold it. Is it doing it? I OK, other hand. Other hand? Yes. Because it, uh, it was on the wrong, there we go. So what it's doing is typing 0001, 0002. And then so you get to this 30 second lockout uh -huh. here. Where it's like, oh, you got to try again in <laughs> 15 seconds. So what it's doing is actually pressing enter to keep that screen alive. It does that 30 second oh, wait. Oh, wow. OK. Should I keep it alive? You said that's really strange. Oh, now it's woken <laughs> up. <laughs> zero, 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 
0006, and it's unlocked. Whoa. How did it not have to do the 30 second wait in between each attempt? So it did actually. It did. We, we, when we look at the Ducky script, mm -hmm. you see what happens here is uh, I'll go somewhat up here, right? And you see it's trying 9941, 9942, 9943. And after each of those, it, it waits a second and mm -hmm. it presses enter. 9944. Well, that's the last try in a series of five. So then what it does is it waits and then presses enter. And then it waits again and presses enter and okay. waits again and presses enter. And each time that it presses enter, it wakes up the screen. Okay. So the screen never goes to sleep, or if it goes to sleep, pressing enter will wake it up again so that it can continue on the attack. Right. And what's crazy is this script goes all the way to 9999. Okay. So if your password is 9999, it's going to take 16 and a half hours. Right. But if N it's not. If it's not. Oh. But what's crazy is at no point in time does, uh, does Android ever self-destruct because you've tried too many times. Right. That's, see, that's why I'm saying the Apple iPhone is just a little bit more secure, I think. I have to agree with you, unfortunately, <laughs> right now, <laughs> despite okay. my open source ideals. We need to get an Apple sticker right here. Yeah, well, but you know what's <laughs> kind of crazy about this, actually? If everyone had the ability through open source or whatever means possible to write their own, even if it was just kind of pathetic, uh -huh. but write their own part of the lock screen in addition to this, yeah. then not only would it be the First Amendment and the Fourth Amendment protecting the privacy of the device, but right. also the fifth if you wrote the own software, because then you would be compelled uh, to, well, to possibly incriminate yourself. Right, right, oh man. So that brings up Just the question of like, is giving up your password a violation of the Fifth Amendment? And if you wrote part of the lock screen, would it be such as well? Right. Scary, huh? Yeah, totally scary. And it's crazy to see how, how Easy. Well, I don't know easy because you definitely you definitely have some hacker skills, but a well, lot of people do. It's too. a one-liner and bash. And once I've done it once, anybody can copy and paste it. Right. And now anybody with a, with a ducky can unlock any Android phone with a four-digit password. Right. Of course, five digits will take like 166 hours, and well, six digits will take 190 years. But in ducky time, that's <laughs> so bad. Duckies go a lot faster. <laughs> Duckies are fast. <laughs> <laughs> you have been fastly trotting the globe. Do you want to tell us about MATV and your adventures? You mean this? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So I actually, you know, MATV is a travel channel. It's, it's travel and it's also video production technology from the consumer space. So it's like the video equipment that you can actually drag around the globe, you know, regular people like travel bloggers. But it was born out of Secure Ninja, the cybersecurity channel, because cybersecurity is so worldwide. Mm. We're traveling you know, to Dubai and Singapore for these trade shows, uh, for cybersecurity shows, and I was like, well, I gotta just make travel videos on the side. Well, what, what's been your favorite show? Um, my favorite episode your, of- Your favorite episode or, or destination? Ooh, gosh, people ask me that all the time. I would say uh, we did this whole Southeast Asia thing. We went to Singapore for, um, it's either RSA or Black Hat the Asia version, mm -hmm. but from there we went to Bali for the weekend. And that was just like amazing, Bali. And then, uh, yeah, just, just Southeast Asia in general. I really want to go back there um, soon, but. But I'm doing San Francisco this weekend. There you I'm go. Here, so I'm staying all weekend and I'm hanging so, out with you. So click here and check out Southeast Asia. Yeah, yeah. Bali. Cool. <laughs> Although that was an early episode, so the production quality, I think, oh, has come a on. bit better. Oh, come on. Come on. You know how it is. You Anybody can like go back and watch episode one of Hack 5. Yeah, right? Yeah. I, I you have to that. live with it. Yeah, I guess so. You have to go back and watch your first episode now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Maybe a warning to us I'm all. I'm going to go back and watch yours. <laughs> Uh-oh. <sure. laughs> this is going to end poorly. <laughs> uh, we all improve. The, the, the important thing is that we're all getting better every day in everything we do. Mm, it's true. Yes. If you're not embarrassed by your previous work, then really have you made any advances? Exactly. That's a very good point. Yes. Exactly. Well, with that, I'm Darren Kitchen. And I'm Shannon Morris. Just kidding. I'm Alicia Webb. <laughs> <laughs> Trust your techno lust. Trust your techno lust. All right, guys. Thank you so much for being on an episode of Secure Ninja TV and showing us the Hack 5 Hacker Space and Studio. You guys are the best. It's Thank been you. fun. Yeah, that was so much fun. Absolutely, <laughs> it was. And I know that you guys have just tons and tons of people on YouTube like following your channel. But if any of our subscribers have not subscribed to Hack 5, do so now because you're going to learn a lot 
a lot from these guys. And we have a we have a, like a girl hacker that's like a for real hacker. I'm, <laughs> I'm just the host, and you're such an amazing hacker. I actually hacked something Aww. for you. You did. It's a gift. I made it what out. What is that? I made it out of either. I think it was your needle nose pliers. It oh said snubs God. on it, and I think it was Darren's <laughs> drone hacking wire. It's a ring. <laughs> It's a friendship Aww, ring. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, Here, I'll put it on my pinky. Yeah. There it fits. It might be resizable. <laughs> it's kind of cool, right? Thank you for the friendship ring. You're welcome, Just Janet. don't heat it to 700 You're degrees. Welcome, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Amen. Yes. yes. <laughs> All right, guys, thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe to Secure Ninja TV. Follow us on Twitter. Check out our Facebook, our Instagram, their Instagram, their YouTube channel. And we'll see you next time. Bye.